already LGBTI people have it hard. You know, we have a very liberal constitution um, that is celebrated across the world. Um, you know, our constitution gives hope. So if we're still fighting prejudice, discrimination, stigma, intolerance in society, that means our constitution is compromised. So it's not about just changing a document. We have to always make sure that we continue to fight for those values. The U.S.-Mexico border, it is hyper-militarized and in the name of safety, it has created so much instability and unsafety and family separation. It just rips people apart. We have a big litigation team, so we do a lot of impact litigation, trying to help folks in the day-to-day -day with the humanitarian aid, keep people alive while they're waiting, and then also fight these policies that are creating situations in which people are suffering greatly. Um, so we're sort of attacking it from both ends. There's a human right to migrate and to decide where one wants to live. Our active project focuses on creating South solution to immigration that happens within our region. It is better if we are able to solve them within our region without sending people always to the global north. Um, just because there's no language barrier, our culture is quite similar, the integration will be faster. The migratory route, it's really, really difficult to find a safe space. I mean, the people who arrived to Dialogo de Verso have been discriminated, have suffered violence, uh, have suffered even human trafficking. And even just to hear them is important for them. And to see that we will not judge them, we will not be violent to them, and we will even, we will help them. We will see their cases and we will do everything that's in our hands to help them. And there is no another space uh, that is considered safe for LGBTIQ plus migrants and refugees in Ecuador. I don't think anybody would just want to leave the country just to go resettle somewhere else. They are fleeing persecution and the impact of leaving your home, your family, your language, your foods, to moving into a new country where you know no one, the support of the Canadian government to Rainbow Road and to partners is needed. From the moment people are identified by Rainbow Railroad, we create sponsorship groups. So these are groups of volunteers. Uh, the individual becomes a family member because they share everything. They share birthdays, celebrations, exploring how the asylum system works, to how to find a house, to get a hug. That's the main difference. It's not that they arrive to a country and they will be by themselves. Working with Rainbow Railroad and through the ACTIVE Fund, um, we've been able to have several different screening tools. So I'm screening uh, HIV positive folks for whether or not they have access to medication and supporting them where they don't, medical referrals, uh, referrals to other partner organizations on the ground that can help potentially offer additional support or quicker support, and then also presenting alternative options to people besides asylum in the U.S. The institutional strengthening has been one of the biggest impact because the active project finances our psychosocial team. And that's, that's what I see because I see the work that Rainbow is doing with several uh, partners. And they know, for example, that it, this has to be a sustainable program. And it's not only like, okay, it's two years and then we're, we're over and that's it, thank you. Because they understand the human mobility like reality and it will not stop. When LGBTI migrant uh, refugees and asylum seekers come in, they've got a process or a pathway of how they can uh, resettle. We're working on mapping sort of southward from the U.S.-Mexico border along main migration routes and identifying LGBTIQ plus affirming organizations, shelters, community centers, clinics, really anything that serves the population because we can help. The problem is we're just, we're not reaching people until they're at the border and then the options are so much more limited. Resources are so much more sparse. When, with the changes that are happening economically and politically around the world, with the rise of populist right-wing governments attacking freedoms, I don't know what can happen in 10 years if I need to be that person seeking asylum somewhere else because of who I am. It should be seen as an investment. It's making sure that the idea of peace, security, and democracy can be felt by anybody 
wherever they're moving to, particularly when they are in need. Let's not forget that we are working to impact these lives. My dream would be to, to really, really strengthen that, that railroad, if you will. <laughs> and if everybody can take that one step, just one, it's eight billion people in the world, one step to changing somebody's life, that for me will count.